so with her first steps as a distance runner in high school being in the 10k road races jamaica's olympian natoya ghoul has progressed to becoming a national 800 meter record holder among some of her proudest moments securing gold in the 2019 panam games in lima peru and silver at the 2018 NACAC Championship, as well as bronze in the 2018 Commonwealth Games. Natoya, the darling of middle distance running in Jamaica, joins us live on set while some of the athletes are at the National Stadium at the moment competing in uh, some other events, including the sprints. Natoya, great having you on the Sports Max Zone. You've never been in our studios before, and we have admired your performances on the track from. 2005 at the Carifta Games, and we're happy to have you here. How, how, you so how, how, how are you doing? And talk to us about your plans for the upcoming season. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling professional right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you are in uh, a genre of track and field that Jamaica and the Caribbean hasn't been dominant in. Yeah. They've been okay, but outside of Anna Fidelia Kirot yeah. from Cuba. Cuba and Letitia Frisday from Suriname. We have not had a lot of outstanding 800 meter runners. Yeah. You are an outstanding 800 oh, meter thank runner. thank you very much. <laughs> and 1500 when you were a teenager. But, but talk to us about what drew you to being a, a middle distance runner. I always tell persons that um, the 800 chose me. <laughs> it chose you, yeah. Because, you know, back when I was a little small girl, my mom but you're still small, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> younger. Okay. <laughs> my mom, my sisters, all of them, they told me, like, they sent me to the shop to buy some goods. And the only reason they believed that I went was because I came back with the, with the, with the grocery. Yes. Because I run everywhere. Yes, yes. And my family, like all of us, Just run. we can run. Yes. I'm the only one that really came out running because my brother used to run, but because yeah. of injury. And this is rural area in Manchester, Manchester, right? Yes, in Manchester, Coffee Grove, Manchester. Yes. Yes, and you know, uh, I, I, Mr. Jerry Olness, you all know Mr. Jerry. Mm -hmm. I asked him one day, Mr. Mr. Jerry, how comes when I came to Manchester, you let all the athletes, they try out sprints, hurdles, everything. But I did not get the chance to do that. And he said, we can't match up my, 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 my best distance runner. <laughs> <laughs> so you were like, targeted. Yeah. Yes. So I was like, I didn't get the chance to like, see even if I could do hurdles or even could run the 100 and 200. But he actually yeah. let me run 200 yeah. instead um, one year. Yeah. I don't even remember what class it was. Yeah. Um, I think it was class four, probably, or class three. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, but I, I get to do the 400 as mm -hmm. well. We run a couple of four by fours so for yes. Manchester High School. Yeah. So, you know, I really like it, you know, but I think it shows me. Yeah, before you became a senior, your Carifta Games record was unblemished. 2005, straight through to 2010, you raced undefeated at the Carifta Games yes. in both the 800 and the 1500 meters. And probably would three, have years been under 17, <laughs> three years of under 17, three years of under 20s as well. So a lot of Caribbean track and field fans remember you from those Carifta days when they knew that if Natoya Gould lines up in an 800 or 1500, the race is uh, as much as finished. How much do you remember of those days? Oh my gosh, it was fun. And actually, that's how I met my husband. Um, <laughs> 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 he always, he told me, he always planned with his Trini girls to beat me when, they, when I go to Carifta. <laughs> Carifta. But they just couldn't get, you know, to beat me. But those days, because my first year was 2005, as you mentioned, um, I don't remember nothing. Mm -hmm. I just remember that me and Tanisha Davis, we were one, two. I saw one picture of us and the clothes bigger than me because <laughs> it's so being so small. Yeah. And then the following year, like, because I, I remember running 214, though. Yeah. But the following year, I ran 209 and ran 432 in the 1500. Yeah. And when I look back, I'm like, that was extremely fast. It was. Because the first year when I, I was actually 13, because my birthday was after Carifta, yes. which was the, the, that Thursday. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that was amazing. It was, but because I enjoyed you, you did three things. years of under 17. Yes. Yeah, uh -huh. But I, 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 I love running under 17. And... You know, every time I go there, I just run. You know, like I didn't know nothing. As I tell someone, <laughs> I didn't know about Olympics until 2004 when Veronica Campbell won um, the gold medal. That was when I knew about Olympics. Yes. And, and you were already a teenager, weren't you? Yes. 13, probably, 12, 13. Yes. <laughs> and I was like, you know, one day I would like to be in the Olympics and World Championships. But when I look at the times, 
that this girl's running 150. I'm like, oh, I'm all the way up here. How am I going to reach down there? And look, years <laughs> later, I'm there. You know? So you can't doubt yourself, right? Yeah. Mm. I want to turn attention to, to this year because this is an interesting year for you. Yes. You know, back to back World Championship finals. You have a national record, which is really fast, 156.15. And you've started really well this year. A couple of 158s, you've run 51.76 over the 400. It's the fastest time you've run since 2011. Give me an idea of how the season is unfolding for you. And just to point out, that's the fastest sea level. Because in 2011, that was in UTEP. So that's oh, yeah, a little that's bit altitude, of altitude. Yeah. So that's yeah. my fastest sea level. But, and also to point out, this is my fastest, like, 158 in early June, mm. because I, I, I ran 158, but that was in April for Commonwealth, but it was 158.8. And then I ran 158 at Trials, which I think it was like probably 158.6 or something like that. But this year, early June, I ran 158.2, which is the fastest I've ever run, you know, this so early. fast. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it has been going, like training has been going good. I had a little setback, but I think it was a blessing in disguise because I think I came back training and racing greater after that setback. And the preparations has been going good. My speed is there, the strength. My runs has been, you know, like extremely well. And as you can see with the 51.7, my speed is there. Before that, I ran 52.1, which was last year. So. I'm super excited about this season. What went into that, the improved speed? Is it increased strength? Is it increased distance running? I mean, running, road running? Give me an idea of how that worked out. You know, over the years, I realized that I am naturally speedy. Like, seriously. Um, like, anything that will come, the speed will always come quick. It's the endurance that I have to make sure that I build up on. But the speed, I think, like, I just have the natural speed. But this year has been extremely faster with my, with my speed work and stuff. Like, mm. I'm running 24s and stuff. I could go there, go on some 200s with these girls, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I think it's based on everything as well, even to do with my runs, the way how I run it, the strength part of it. Because, you know, the long runs, they are slow twitch. Mm. But it can be fast if you actually run you at a certain tempo, level. Yeah. yeah, so my runs, the way how I run them is, like, the tempo is fast than the norm and I think that helped me to be able to turn over faster. Mm. Mm. The, this season, as I mentioned, of course, the national record, which you told me just a few weeks ago that you're targeting your own national yes, record, I the 156.15. Is it something that you're targeting in the context that you need to run a time like that to be able to be on a podium in the, on the major championships, given what we've seen from Athing Moore and others? Is that a time that you think will get you on a podium? finally in a, in a major championship final. Not to discredit being in a final, because being in a final means you're the top eight in the world. But to, to make that extra step, do you think that going beyond 156.15 is what will eventually help to get there? I think so. I really do think so, based on how it's been going this year. Because even though like the, the, the world lead is 155, and the second fastest time this year is 157, but mm -hmm. it's just the start. You know, that was Mary's second, um, well, not no, Diamond League-wise, mm. second 800 meters. And I don't think she has run to her full potential as yet. And so is Keely. She's doing well. And we have been only one race from a thing mm. so far. And you cannot discredit the other athletes as well because no one name is on the, the medals. Mm. So in order for, for us to be able to be on the podium, I think it's going to, take a faster time than what it was last year because last year it was one of the six. Mm -hmm. I really think it's going to be something similar to Olympics back in 2021 to be on the podium. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah, but the, the interesting thing as well is that you have a long, what other people don't even realize, you have a long-standing relationship with Coach Mark Elliott from LSU days, you followed him to Clemson. Give me an idea of how that relationship has evolved over the years to your benefit. Well, you know, it has, we have a great coach and athlete relationship. And if you don't have that, then I don't think you will be able to do well in track and field because you have to trust your coach, trust what he says, and also, you know, build that. Because he's like a father figure to me right now. And over the years, like if, if I say something to him, I am not the coach, but if I think something, you know, worked, like one specific workout, I said, coach, I'd rather do that instead of doing that and you and we did it and it worked extremely well that was back in 2018 and from then we're constantly doing it because for me mentally and also it give you you know um 
that workout in as mm -hmm. well. And you know, he's a great listener. You know, sometimes I wish he would be harder on me, <laughs> but he can be hard. I always tell him that he's cruel because of the workouts I get, but he always laughs at it. Um, but that relationship with us, it's, it's, it's really great. Mm -hmm. um, I can't ask for a better coach. Did he tell you that he used to run for St. Diego at Champs? Yes. Against he Kevin. still has some road um, 10K record, I think. Yeah, man. National that, record. Yeah. 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 I, remember, I remember him well. Yeah. <laughs> Mark, Mark Elliott. Yes. You, we just described you as, as the darling of Jamaica's track and field. And I would like to extend that by suggesting that even globally, and I think when people see you run, because you're so small, I think people warm to you, um, Natoya, and I, I want to ask you if, because of your size, you have rivals like Ating Mo and so on who are big and tall. Do you feel that it's difficult for you because you're small and because the 800 isn't a lane event and bigger athletes can outmuscle you when things get tight? Is that, a, is that a hindrance to you then, because you're so small? You know, at first, when I was not that strong, because you know, you can see my little muscles on you. <laughs> <laughs> so you're strong now. But go ahead, I'm listening, I'm listening. Yeah. <laughs> when I wasn't that strong, strong, yeah. I would say that it was a little difficult because, you know, I would get pushed yes. and that would throw me off. Yes. But since I've gotten a little stronger, you know, I have not to have that problem. Like I can bounce back and yes, stuff yeah. like that. So I would say like now it's better. At first it used to be a little difficult. A little intimidating. Yes. About your running style and your strategy in races, for a long period at your senior level, you were a pace setter. You went out front and you just gave it everything and if they catch you, they catch you. But we noticed in recent years, you, you, you started to s sit back a little bit and sort of measure your pace throughout the race a little differently. Um, is that something that you and Coach Mark Elliott would have studied and executed? You know, you know as you grow older, you become wiser. And if you realize that something that you're doing is not working, then you have to switch it up. And that's what was happening to me. I was getting out, and it's not that I couldn't maintain it. Like, if they come upon me, then sometimes panic will take over, and you will, like, overdo, mm -hmm. and then that will cost you. Mm -hmm. And even, like, getting out that first 100 too fast, that can affect you in the last 100. And mm -hmm. I feel like I used to get out in 12 seconds. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's too, too fast. fast. So yes, that's yes. why I would fade. It's not because of, like, taking the front. Because when I won Brussels Diamond League, I followed the, 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 the pacer because she actually cussed me out. <laughs> she said, you guys always ask him for pace and you don't come. <laughs> and I'm, like, I'm going to come. And that's why I took the front in that race. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she was so mad at me. But, but then I was able to win. So sometimes it's based on the race. Yes. Like when I run here in Jamaica, if I want to run a certain time, I have to take the pace out. Yes. And when I was in high school, remember, I'm always a loner. Yeah. So it, it took years to be able to change that yes, because yes. that's what it was natural I was for you used to. to. Yes, yes. But as I get older now and mm. be able to be on the, the, that, this high level, be able to be in Diamond League races, because I was not in Diamond League races until 2018. Mm. So I wouldn't have that experience yes. as well. Yes. So I was still a baby in 2018, 2019, even though I'm older than most of them, I was still a baby on yeah. the circuit. So now that I can say that I'm grown. So so I'm able to like be able to do it much better. Yeah. Yeah. Natoya Gold, um, <laughs> world class 800 meter runner, national record holder in Jamaica, live on the Sports Max Zone. We come back with her after the break. I hope I'm doing.